Hey everybody, Jem Schofield here with the C47 and another episode of Gearbox. Brand new week and in fact tomorrow, uh, Tuesday, I have a workshop at Able Cine in the evening which I'll post information on over here. And today we're going to talk a little bit about this fixture right here which is called the Alzo 3000. Uh, the first time I saw this in its final built form, though I had seen uh, at least prototypes of it prior to this, was at DV Expo East, which was in New York recently. And I want to take you through this light. Pretty interesting LED fixture, especially because of its price point, and definitely something I would consider having inside of my kit. Um, this is kind of a redonkulous price that it's being offered for, especially through July 18th, because there is a 15% uh, off of everything at Alzo. So you can get this thing for less than $250 shipped, which is um, less money than a lot of on-camera LED lights. So I'm going to break it down, show you all the bits and bobs. So you can see what the kit that I would recommend you get is, and there are some other accessories that you can get, including a larger reflector, which I think might be useful uh, for certain situations. Comes here with a little cap, which protects the actual LED fixture. This is a clustered LED, so while it looks like it's a single source, there are small little, they look like little tiny squares that are producing the LED light from this fixture. And the draw on this fixture is 100 watts and it is outputting daylight at approximately 5500 Kelvin at close to an output of or around the same output of a 1K tungsten fixture. So um, pretty good output and again for under 250 bucks kind of crazy. So I'm going to turn this thing around. Um, I should probably turn off the, the background light, which I'll do in a second. I'm going to lose my fill for a minute. but um, And I'm going to show you kind of what it looks like. But you'll see over here that you've got just a inline power cord. And then over here, so no extra uh, ballast or anything. Everything's built into the unit. And then over here, this is how you adjust how much output the light is giving. Now, it's not a continuous, which I'll show you, dimmer and the reason is that Alzo feels that you're going to get a much longer life if you do it this way. It changes the light in half stop increments and the unit itself um, even though this LED is relatively small and has a small draw because of this LED technology this is essentially a, a large heat sink with a small fan inside of it that runs continuously and at about one meter you should have a zero dB for your talent so you shouldn't hear that fan and we'll give that a shot in a little while to see how that goes. Um, so I'm going to go ahead and kill this background light right now and then I'm going to turn on the fixture and then I'll start to add the different parts that are part of it so you can see how those work and what they do to modify this light. So just hold on one second. I'm going to walk over here and I am just going to kill the background and the fill light and if I come back over here you'll see uh, now that I'm going to go ahead and fire this up. So let me strike this and the fan kicks in which again now right now you're right next to it so you can see there's the output of the light it's daylight balanced so I'm using actually tungsten light so this is going to read blue in the background uh, you can see that it's got a pretty nice output and even though it's not a single source LED we get a pretty good um, shadow on here a little bit uh, you know a little bit of blooming here on the edges and even though it's a high CRI inherent to LED technology you will see a little bit of green inside of that spectrum and there are some things that you can do that will help with that which I'll show you in a second but this is without anything on the light and you definitely don't want to touch that fixture but you can see here that um, you're not going to be able to cut a cookie like you would with a Fresnel but it's pretty good here's the stepping here to cut the light so you can see, so you will see a flash, so this is not something you would do while you were actually shooting. And now we're going to talk about a couple of other things. The uh, first one is this little piece that comes with the light, and it's a little, um, basically a lens, which is frosted on the inside, clear on the outside. It has a tiny little grid here, and this lens, um, it, it, sort of, it concentrates the light, sort of like a parabolic um, reflector and if you put it onto the light it just pops on then you'll see that it just sort of softens out the light a little bit and um, and it definitely reduces that little issue um, softer shadow 
reduces that issue in terms of just that tiny green fringing there. And then this, and this is the way that I would probably recommend getting the kit. It comes with a little reflector always, uh, but there's also an option to get it with barn doors, which I'll just show you the barn doors. We won't have to hook those up. So you just slide this in and just give it a turn. And you'll see that now, now we're seeing a little bit of the edge here. And if you want to soften that up, and again, this is going to cut the light again, you have this little guy right here that comes with it. It doesn't really fit me. I guess you could use it as a shower cap. Um, but it just sits over here with a little netting, and that just softens the light again. Now, it's not my preferred way of doing it. Here, I'm just going to step in front of the light to do this. It's not my preferred way to soften the light, so I'm going to show you guys some other options. But you will see that, again, unless you pull that netting all the way to the edge, you're going to see a little bit of the edging there and some concentric circles. So for me, probably not going to use this, but um, nice that they put it in the kit. These are the barn doors, uh, easy to use, and nice magnetic pieces inside of here. So if you want to put gels in, they just magnetize, which I've always liked uh, Alzo doing. So you just basically pop, let me just pop these barn doors down here. And you'll see, just to get to this, there's these little magnetic pieces. So if you're using gels, you can just pop them in there and you don't have to think about using C47s. Now generally, um, when I'm obviously diffusing light, I don't want that diffusion right up against the light. And let me go ahead and just take that little lens off again so you can see this with the reflector and no lens. And again, there's the edges. So if that's gonna be in shot, then I think you wanna diffuse that a little bit differently than we're doing right now. Um, so that gives you a pretty good idea of the actual fixture itself and what it comes with. There are some additional accessories, one of which is a larger reflector, and I think that that may be useful if you're doing what I'm going to do right now. So I'm going to go ahead and turn on that background light again and just show you another idea for using this light. So I'm just going to walk over here. I'm going to strike that, uh, bring those back up. Let me go ahead and kill this for a minute and then show you guys another thing. So this is something that Alzo has done with a lot of their fixtures in the past. Even though this is a continuous light fixture, there is a little area here that I can take, especially when I have the reflector on here, things like umbrellas, and I can attach those to the system. And this is really nice. I just run that through here. I'm going to tighten that down and swing it around. And you can see that now I have a really nice bounced light source. Uh, strike that again. It's going to obviously kick into those cameras just so you can see this though. And you can see that there's quite a lot of light bouncing here. Again, a larger reflector and a larger umbrella would uh, obviously be a nice combination because I like large light sources that are close to the subject. Um, we're mixing a lot of light here, so that's looking a little funky. But you guys get the basic idea. We're doing a little bounce into here. Uh, right now, without this little reflector, and this is probably the way I would use it, uh, just to get the most light output if I was going to use an umbrella to bounce it. And uh, pretty cool overall. Now, as I said, um, you know, this is not necessarily a lighting fixture that you would use all of the time. We used it recently when I went in and helped a friend with a dock shoot and we were in an office that had a lot of natural light coming in in the city. It was a cloudy day and we took this thing and we just bounced it off of a corner just to basically create more light inside of the room and use it as our key. And it worked very, very well. Um, it's definitely, in my opinion, an owner-operator lamp, so or light, not lamp. Uh, it's something that you, you know, would basically have in your kit. It wouldn't necessarily be something that you would throw on a grip truck all of the time. And that's kind of the way I view the stuff that Alzo makes. If you take care of this stuff, it gives you uh, a lot for your money. And for less than $250 shipped, that's a lot for your money. And I can't see most people, especially who are dealing with daylight situations, not using this light in some situations. So what I'm going to do right now is I'm actually going to dip to black and I'm going to just set this up where I'm going to turn off the studio lights. And it's not going to be a typical lighting setup, but I just want you guys to see how this light looks by itself. Um, just maybe bounced off and I'll take something like this and just use that as a fill so you guys can see that. Um, I'm obviously going to have to change the color temperature of the cameras to do that. So let's do that, and I'll come back in a second.
Okay, so now we're back, and I have the Alzo 3000 over there, about a meter away, and it's just bouncing into that little umbrella. And, uh, and just a piece of white foam core over here for a tiny bit of fill. I've cut off all the other lights because I just want you to see what this light produces when it's about three feet away and being bounced uh, into an area. So you can get an idea. Um, usually when I'm using LED fixtures especially I'll do a custom white balance I haven't done one today and I'm kind of partial to using warm cards I'll use like a warm one because if you just use a uh, you know a true white um, then it'll tend to create a cooler image and one of the nice things about a custom white balance in the camera system is it'll take a look at all of your channels and it'll also compensate for the fact that most of the LED fixtures out there, even the ones that have a high CRI, um, they don't reproduce light exactly the same way as a traditional tungsten fixture or an HMI and it seems to just sort of smooth stuff out and uh, take those casts away. You can also go in camera to a lot of your camera systems and you could dial in a little bit of minus green. Uh, but again on the Alzo 3000 the main thing that I'm seeing with this light is I'm seeing sort of on the edges there just a little tiny bit of a green uh, fringe on there. But again $250, actually less than uh, if you're getting it with the coupon code. And so having a light like this in your kit for that amount of money makes a lot of sense for a lot of people because you might just need that little punch in certain situations. And there you have it. And I'll see you guys next time on Gearbox.